it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's very heated and very interesting conversation I'm having with um, Luasio Fale here. So on the issue of corruption. Let's, let's How do we obliterate corruption? How do we obliterate it? I, I think the... What is Ashwaju's plan? Yes, I, I, I think that the... And Ashwaju's plan, don't let me even think, is mm. to say that, look, if we provide or remove the incentive for corruption, then the threshold, really, remove the threshold for corruption and all of that, the, the propensity for corruption will mm. come down. And what does he mean? Um, beyond, of course, the uh, law enforcement, the letting all of the legal framework that we have, you know, to take to tackle corruption in offices and you know civil service take its course, is also to look at the underlining causes of corruption in Nigeria, and and really it is our consumer loan and consumer credit system. That's one. The second thing, because if you look at it from a civil servant perspective, mm. do you understand? You will know what they earn, and then, of course, they go to the same market that you and I go to. They, you know, they, their children will attend the same schools, and they go to the same hospital. So they, they don't have a different civil servant uh, rate for that. So they come back to this economy and to, to compete. And then you expect them to buy houses, cash and carry. You expect them to buy TV, cash and carry. What our credit system has done is that the lack of that you know, um, consumer credit system and the mortgage system that we have around, that the lack of it where everything is cash mm. and carry, fuels that propensity to then go and look for huge sum of money to, 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 to buy and to feel you know, uh, inclus inclusive, to be inclusive you know, in the society. So what a descending government must do, and what a, and, uh, the Ashwaji government will do, is to begin to look at those issues that accentuate the need to amass wealth that you don't really need. Do you understand? Mm. If a civil servant knows that, look, my job is secure, and through this job, I'm paying my children's school fees, I'm paying for my mortgage, I'm paying some of the consumer um, loan that I've taken, and you know that, if for any infraction I lose that job, I would not be able to pay for those things. By all means, I mean, we know some people will still go above the line. That's where the law will come. By all means, majority of people are self, you know, um, aware enough to say, look, as long as I have a roof over my head, I, I want to buy TV of 100,000, I can buy it, pay over, you know, six months or one year. That threshold reduces. And that's what Ashwaja said. That's why he said, look, we will institute a mortgage system in Nigeria that people do not have to buy houses in cash and carry. We will ensure that, you know, even in renting houses, you don't have to pay 10 years, 5 years, 3 years lease, do you understand, mm. all of that. We will encourage the banking system to formulate the right policy to grow a consumer lending culture in Nigeria. So that's really one aspect. Of course, the other aspect is hard and forceful enforcement. Anybody that then falls, you know, short of all of this would then be, you know, the weight of the law would then come upon them. In, in that way, I think that some of this corruption, um, it was the call, we really, we really o reduce. Outside the manifesto, in your own opinion, do you think it's high time we had death, sen death penalty for corruption in this country? Like I said, you know, when it comes to law, uh, policies, law formulations, legal framework, I think that it is what the majority of Nigerians want that we can get. Personally, I don't think that um, corrupt um, allegations or conviction should come with death sentence. I think what is important is um, uh, repatriation. What is important is to totally remove such what you call from the system. They should serve the jail term that is stipulated for you know whatever their crime is in my personal opinion but but if the majority of nigerians say that we want death sentence for anybody that steal government money let us institute it by our legal process it's it's it's, it's, it's that simple mm -hmm. you know and, and that's really what 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 we should do okay okay let's talk about ag agriculture yes i should use manifesto plus ag agriculture he says in, in, in his manifesto that <clears throat> Right now, um, only about 35% of 
you know, cultivated, cultivable land is being conservated at the arable land the arable, at the moment, yes. and also extended to sixty-five percent. Yes. Within what four years? Yes. How are you going to achieve that? Do you that? doubt that? I, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Where's the manpower to achieve that? Where's the money to achieve? Where's the resources the, to achieve the that? The manpower is there. You know, I mean, Nigerians is Nigerians are there, and that's really what we think will be the bedrock of our. Um, diversification, so to speak. Uh, before now, Nigeria was an agricultural-led country. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, we were there. You understand? Before mm. we, we, we found oil, we were, you know, we were exporting rubber, cocoa, palm can, all of those things. And those forests, those uh, farms are still there. What we need to do is to justify to young, able-bodied Nigerians that that sector is interesting and is available for them to take advantage of. It's a sector that they can find prosperity. It's a sector that they can, they can do whatever they, yes, they, they, they could. And all government has to do in this instance is to provide the enabling environment. First and foremost, what are those enabling environments? It's, of course, to look at some of the bottlenecks that has inhibited, inhibited that sector access to finance, basically. And you find finance that... Has, yeah. Finance has always been... I mean, this bright government did a lot of finance. It did, it for, did. For, I, for farmers. Yes. And, 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 program. and you see, as much as the government has been vilified in terms of cost of living, uh, food prices, staple foods increment, it is those investments that has actually still kept us where we are at the moment, where some of the vagaries of the global supply chain hasn't really affected us. Mm. And if there is consistent um, you know, implementation of that sort of program, and I showed you, thankfully, I said, look, I will deepen that sort of you know, access, provision of capital and all of that in aiding if, um, agricultural uh, farmers, really. Mm. Do you understand? We will, of course, begin to see incremental um, increase in our Productivity, agree. Like. But, one, but one problem the Borea region is seeing mm. is that, for instance, they give farmers loans and access to finance and what have you. They grow this produce, but they refuse to sell in Nigeria. They start selling it across the borders where they can sell it for well, higher. Yes. And so, so that's so, so that, that's, counterproductive. That, that still requires, you know, a, a, a effective monitoring. But what is key in terms of Ashwaju's agricultural, um, you know, plan is also to look at his plan for one, the community boards where as farmers, so some of the challenge with the farmers is that, look, I grow my grain, I grow my cash crops, and then um, I'm looking for ready market who to take off, and then the prices fluctuate from here. But if you know that when I produce, there's a, there's a commodity exchange that guarantees your pricing, that you can, you know, you know you can sell to, those ones take, you, you go back to farming. So there is constant markets for you to, you know. But with that, so I, I mean, I saw that in the manifesto as well, which is yeah. to have sort of a uniform pricing. Price, pricing for, for, cash, for cash crops. Across, across, across the nation. But then there's issues of demand and supply. Mm -hmm. Now, the different cost of transportation, logistics here and there, that might affect different producers in different states. But, 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 Wouldn't but, that be but factored Latif, in, in, Latif, in, in What you in must remember is that We've done. We've had. We used to have this commodity exchange, the yes. commodity board, yes. and they ultimately, in setting price, take into cognizance transportation from you know, and that's why we say, look, we will set up those boards regionally mm. so that they are closer mm. to you. So the, the people in in Kaduna are not looking to the Lagos commodity market. exchange to sell. If the Kaduna commodity exchange is buying closer to his market, then. Now, strategically determining, okay, what are for local consumption? What are the ones going for export? Mm. Do you understand? And that way we begin. But what is important is that it gives the farmer the peace of mind that, look, all I should focus on is farming. Do you understand? The market is there. The prices, I know the price and all of that. But importantly is also to look at, okay, what is, of course, even our strategic intent and around our reserves? that sort of guarantees us food security. 
Because ultimately, beyond looking to diversify and earn forex and income from our agricultural products, first of all, to feed ourselves. Absolutely. Do you understand? Absolutely. And if we cannot store our produce in a way that, okay, they are not damaged during rain, they are not damaged during flooding, mm. we will not have the kind of food security that we aspire, and then the prices will fluctuate. And as well as you said, look, we'll build strategic grain reserves across the country that, you know, that will store you know, our grains and, you know, cash crops that will ensure that we have the sort of food reserve that will not make us be susceptible to global disruption in supply chain and all of that. So that's very key. That also keep, you know, because once that is not, the fl price flotation is to, not there. To, to promote uh, agriculture, do you think it might be necessary to shut the borders? For instance, with rice. Mm. Rice importation was, was banned. Mm. And right now we are almost independent of mm. rice importation in the country mm. since seven years going on now. Yeah. So do you think that approach should also be imitated with other um, farm producers? I, 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 I'm sure that all, all policy you know, tools will be on the table. Uh, we've seen the, the success that we made out of the rice initiative. Do you that you in support of a border shot? No. No, because I recall his statement at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group where he engaged with, I mean, you yes, of course know what the NSG is. Yes. And I recall him saying that some of our trade restrictions in terms of implemented by way of border control and all of that has excavated our, you know, uh, inflation, the inflation that we see in food supply as... If he has re increased the cost of production generally. Mm. In world. So from that statement, I see that he's not strictly in favor of shutting the border for, you know, what's it called? I think what is important is to look at the policy tool and say, look, how do we fashion out a sustainable model? Because we as a country must allow ourselves be to be competitive enough in a way where we take advantage of the African free trade, uh, you know, uh, agreement. Uh, uh, yes, agreement. And it's, of course, by open borders, by allowing people to come here and trade, by, because you, it will interest you to note that all of the West African countries, even the Central African countries around us, ultimately come to Nigeria to, to trade. Mm. Do you understand? You see them in Aba, you see them in the uh, Lagos Island Absolutely. market, you see them. So we must facilitate that because ultimately it needs to our benefit. So, in my view, if government provides the necessary infrastructure, and part of the infrastructure is the ability to take produce from farm to market and to export zone. Mm -hmm. And that's why the key is in accelerating our infrastructural master plan to ensure that some of the places where our major produce are being farmed have good roads. <music>